celebrate this festive season with RR Anand Bhavan Sweets and Snacks. Holidays nale, adi nama GT Holidays da. South India's number one travel brand. Arisa shirts and trousers. Hello and welcome to Galata Plus. In this video review episode, we are going to be talking about Lokesh Kanakaraj's much anticipated Leo. The film is a mixed bag. The mass moments work, the dramatic ones not so much. The most positive thing about Leo is that like Vikram, it is a 100% Lokesh Kanakaraj film. The melodramatic family friendly daughter track of Kaidi that's gone. The fan service college portions of Master that's gone with the exception of one song, Na Ready Here like Patala Patala in Vikram, this director has turned the concept of a star vehicle into a director vehicle. Co-written with Ratna Kumar and Dheeraj Vaidhi, this is a clean screenplay. Like in Jailer, there is no out of nowhere twist father-son drama. Like in Jawan, there is no out of nowhere messaging about farmer suicides or corporate villains. The narrative lines, the character lines, they are very clean. They are not terribly inventive, more about that later. And like Vikram, this film is better enjoyed as a theatrical experience. I'm not sure the mass moments are going to explore on OTT, but every choice locks together cleanly and at the very basic level, the story chugs along without any bumps. But is that enough? More about that later, but let's begin with the hero introduction stretch in a small town in Himachal Pradesh where a hyena is running rampant and is cornered in the compound of a school filled with children. If you want to read this as a metaphor, the signals could not be clearer. A wild animal is loose amidst innocence and is tamed by kindness and social interaction. The same could be said about a protagonist Parthiban played by Vijay. Just a few scenes earlier, we have seen a bad man kill a dog. Here, a good man chooses not to kill the hyena. But how does Parthiban, a greying middle-aged man who runs a cafe, possess the skills to tackle a creature that exists outside the bounds of civilization? If you've seen the name of the cafe, Wild Beans, and if you've seen A History of Violence, you know the answer. David Cronenberg's film is acknowledged in a title card. When confronted by evil men, Parthiban fights like a beast. He fights with the instincts of a cornered hyena. So is he a former gangster named Leo? That's the big change Lokesh makes with respect to the story of the original. There the answer was revealed fairly early on. Here we have to wait for the end. The other expected change is that unlike the Hollywood film, this is not an examination of violence. There the son turns violent in school. The wife has and enjoys violent sex. It's a chain reaction. That sort of philosophical track would be too much to incorporate into a big star vehicle. The closest we get is a morality tale that Parthiban tells his children about a serial killer. The moral comes back to reflect on him a little later. Otherwise, Lokesh replaces all the existentialism of history of violence with a kaiti-like series of scenes, action scenes involving a number of generic villains, each one coming in one after the other after the other. Like with a lot of things about Leo, not bad is what you'd call the action by Anbari. The Vijay Trisha sees she's the wife are not bad. She gets one terrific stretch of dialogue where she asks her husband if this is how the rest of their life is going to be. I love the way the lines were worded. The other big husband-wife scene involving a kiss is not bad. And earlier in their first scene together, why showcase her anger if you are going to dissolve the emotion in a matter of seconds? And what is it with Lokesh and athletic events in Master? He showcased archery. Here it's the javelin throw. The thrower is Parthiban's son, played by an excellently cast Matthew Thomas. He really resembles Vijay. The father-son relationship? Not bad. Part of the fun in a Lokesh movie is spotting the Lokeshisms, like the placement of the title, and spotting the references from the old songs, like the Hindi version of Ile Nila, or the Kamal Hassan homage moments, like the wife named Satya. The best homage comes in the form of the cutest character in Moonram Pirai, and it leads to a smashing mass moment much, much later on. I think there's a Tarantino homage too, if I'm not mistaken, and this time the homage is to Brad Pitt's shirtless scene on the roof in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But all this fun cannot compensate for the lack of depth in the drama. The major scenes where Parthiban's wife begins to wonder if her husband is truly another man, they are tossed off too casually. Sanjay Dutt plays a villain who could have been almost Shakespearean given his greed and his belief in occult practices, but he just does not register as a fully formed character. He's just a not bad villain. A bigger issue is the overall flabbiness. Leo is always engaging, but there's the constant feeling of a longer movie being cut down to result in this already long movie. The bigger storylines are cleanly written, but many smaller scenes seem redundant. 
Why is a veterinarian killed? Why do we need that scene about a great horned owl? What is the purpose of wasting time on the marriage of some minor character? What is that odd scene where the forest officer played by Gautam Vasudev Menon offers Parthiban a drink? Why show the wife of a dead man swearing vengeance only to never show her again? And I know that we are at the foundation level of the LCU, but when one character from Kaidi made a guest appearance in Vikram, it made sense because they were both fighting against drugs. Here, another character from Kaidi and a minor player from Vikram make an appearance and it does not feel organic. It feels like a stunt to get results from the audience. Our hero movies were already over the top, but after Jawan, Jailer and now Leo, I think we may have to coin a new term. These are not just mass movies, they are scream generating machines. I'm going to call them SGM. There is a long list of names in the cast, but with the exception of Vijay in one of his better performances, none of them register as flesh and blood characters. Why cast Mishkin and Anurag Kashyap and give them so little to do, but that I think is old fashioned thinking. Had the same minor parts been played by minor actors, the SGM would have come to a screeching halt and we would have had a silent theater. This way Mishkin appears and screams of recognition are generated. Anurag Kashyap appears and screams of recognition are generated. The question is not, is this all that Mishkin gets to do? That's not the question. The trick to enjoyment is to recognize that thanks to big name casting, the supporting character elevation moment is now as legit a thing as the hero elevation moment. But how much nicer it would be if this elevation happened because of the casting and because of dramatic writing, like the fantastic closure of Parthiban's violent episode with a rude and insensitive cop in a police station. Sanjay Dutt, Trisha, Arjun, Gautam Vasudev Menon, Mansoor Ali Khan, Mishkin, Priya Anand, Sandy Master, these names are all there. But you leave the theatre wondering why they never become anything more than generic good guys or bad guys without any specific traits that are sustained over a period. As a result, the second half becomes extremely predictable as one generic villain keeps showing up after another. The screen generating machine keeps going, especially with Anirudh pouring on the adrenaline. But what about those of us who want more from Lokesh and want an actual movie? I felt Lokesh should have done better to actually stick to the history of violence template with just two well-written main villains. Think of how powerful Vijay Sethupati's single villain was in Master. Would we be asking all these questions of or having all these expectations from another filmmaker? Perhaps not, but Lokesh Kanakaraj shows promise, shows signs of becoming a true genre auteur. And at least I felt a twinge or I feel a twinge when he doesn't deliver the goods. You can't think of many other new gen filmmakers. Think up the fine showy single shot captured by a drone, it's both dizzying and exhilarating. Manoj Paramahamsa is a cinematographer, but the bigger need of the hour is to punch up the dramatic writing. Mahanagaram is proof that Lokesh can do solid drama. So I don't know what is happening in these big star action movies. They are fun to watch, but they'd be even better if they gave us something to take home, something to remember, something that's more than just a competent screen generating machine and that's it about leo if you like this video if you do subscribe to galata plus and see you soon at the movies holidays nale at the gt holidays tha. south india's number one travel brand ariser shirts and trousers celebrate this festival season with adhyar anandabhavan sweets and snacks